You need somebody to talk to. God is setting the stage. And he's saying, hey, dum diddy dum dum. That's me talking. Just give me the license, okay? Talk to me. And you'll be looking at a photo of me because I've been too busy in book work to <laughs> get, get ready for the camera. Okay, starting at verse one. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained in my spirit and was overwhelmed. This Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart and my spirit, made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth he prom does his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the most Hi, y'all, I'm stopping there for a second. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how frustrated, how nervous, how anxious, how bad and cloudy things, how dark things glooming on you. Don't worry about it. The stuff you hear on the news, the stuff you deal with with people, the, the problems you have financially, the issues you have with your coworkers. Don't worry about it, y'all. You know why? Because God's in control. God's in control. And you notice it never fails for that sun to come up. I don't care if it's rainy, dark, and cloudy. That sun is still in its position. And so are we. So you remember God is in control. Nothing is happening outside of his knowledge. Nothing is happening outside of his ability to allow it or disallow it. Whatever he chooses is what's going to go down. So know that no matter what, the, the end result will always be the center of God's will. And remember, he is not against you. He is for you. And you know what the scripture says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Not even the devil. As much power as some of y'all give him. Not even the devil. All right, here we go. Listen to this. Now. Let me continue reading here. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. Verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy works and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great as God is our God? God, thou art the God that doeth wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the son of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw thee, O oh God, the waters saw thee. They were afraid. It's talking right there. It's talking about when the waters came apart so Moses and the Israelites could walk on dry land. Remember that? The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The sky set out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightning lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. <laughs> thy way is in the sea and thy path is in great waters and thy footsteps are not known. Thou leddest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses. Oh, there it is. And Aaron. Listen, you guys, I don't care what's going on. You've got a God on your side. You hear me? He's on your side. He's not only pulling for you. He already has your pathway laid out. See, he says in Isaiah, I go before you and make the crooked places straight. And the rough places plain. You know what the word plain means? 
smooth. So if I were to put that in my little Mickey Mouse words, I would say he knows how to smooth out all our rough edges. You hear me? He knows how to straighten out your confusion. He knows how to remove your fear and put you in perfect peace. He knows how to calm your nerves. Mm -hmm. He knows how to remove those that get on your last nerves and enjoy doing so. Oh, yes. He knows how to get people away from you that are not doing you any good and don't have your best interests at heart. He knows how to handle your enemies, y'all. He knows how, if he is in, look, that, that song, My Redeemer, who tells the ocean it can only come so far? Who tells, I mean, all of nature knows its limits. All of nature knows its place. When you're at the beach, you don't have to worry about that ocean coming over your head because you know it's only going to come so far and then it has to go back to its place. That's the control God has, y'all. You may not have that control, but your father, which art in heaven, surely does because he created all this. So you have to remember that when he sat there and created you, when he sat there and created your destiny, when he sat there and started putting things in you, imparting things in you, equipping you, strengthening you on the inner man, preparing you, teaching you, opening your eyes and giving you discernment, warning you, protecting you. He is aligning you with his plan for your life because you were born with purpose and God will, <coughs> he will see you through. He who began a good work in you. Mm -hmm. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He'll be faithful to complete it. He who started a work will be faithful to complete it in you. I'm hoarse, but you get the point. You know, we think, <clears throat> I was thinking about this scripture. You know, sometimes we think that, you know, God has limits but he doesn't. So even though we do, you know, but we're not God, you know, we forget that part. So picture Moses with the, the people of, uh, you know, with the Jews and he's standing there and there's nothing behind him, but the ocean, big old vast ocean, right? But what is coming up on his tail? Who is pursuing him? Pharaoh. After Pharaoh lets him go, God hardens his heart because see, God's got a plan up his sleeve. And there are times God will harden somebody's heart against you so that you can be in a position where you cannot rescue yourself. He will put you in a position where you, your little pea brain cannot come up with an answer. He will put you in a position where there are no friends anywhere. Nobody to come to your rescue. Nobody to answer your phone. And all those times when you're mad because nobody's answering the phone and you need somebody to talk to, God is setting the stage and he's saying, hey, dum diddy dum dum. Th that's me talking. Just give me the license, okay? Talk to me. I'm listening, but you ain't talking. I'm hugging, but you're not crying out to me. I'm reaching out to you, but you're staring at the idiot box, frustrated mad at your circumstances instead of sitting on my lap crying on my chest and let me pour into you the strength you need because see you need strength to go through it but I won't get you through it because there's something on the other side that's sitting there in a box with a ribbon on it that I had designated just for you but the only way you're going to get that box, the only way you're going to get that gift, the only way you're going to be blessed in that area is if you go through this. So you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your thoughts. You got to guard your attitude. You hear me? You got to watch what you say as well and watch how you respond to people. 
because the better you go through, the quicker you go through. And if I can get you to get in there without a whole bunch of bumps, dips, curves, and detours, the quicker you get your hands on that blessing I have for you. But the reason I have to take you through is because I must prepare you. I watched a uh, comedy years ago. It was a silly movie. Yes, it was. So give me a license. <clears throat> In this movie, and I know that God wants me to talk about it because I have not thought about this movie probably for the last 20 years. But I saw this movie about 35 years ago. And it was about this little skinny, skinny, scrawny nerd. Oh, the poor little man. He was a pitiful sight, I'm telling you. Even olive oil wouldn't want him. You know, Popeye's olive oil. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He'd be too scrawny for her. And you know how skinny she was. So this poor little guy, he gets, I forget how he gets up in this position. But now he's thrust back in the days of the uh, the gladiators and all of that. And <clears throat> he's skinny, he's frail, he's afraid. <laughs> he's not worth two, two peas in a pie, <laughs> but he's there. And somebody gets him to become one of the slaves on a ship. And I'm telling you, that poor boy, he cried, he suffered, he went through so much. But by the time he got through, he had him a little physique, y'all. He he had a little muscle. You know how Popeye would hold his little arm up? You see that little lump? And that would be his muscle until he ate his spinach. Well, this man's spinach was the rowing of that boat. And he rowed and rowed and rowed and rowed. Before you knew it, two or three of the people rowing with him had to go on the other side. And next thing you know, three or four of the other people that were on the same side had to go on the other side of the boat. Because by the end, he was rowing his side of the boat alone. And all the other guys had to be on the other rows on the other half of the ship in order to keep up with him. He was built. He was stacked like a brick house. He looked like a regular Hercules. So I say all that to say, sometimes you got to go through because God knows how much muscle you're capable of building. He knows how much stamina you got. He knows how much character is hidden down there underneath all them yellow feathers of yours. He knows what you're capable of doing because he made you and he put the capabilities in you, which means you can quote the scripture. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, you said it, you heard it, but do you believe it? Because the more you believe that, the more you can do. The more you believe God and his word, the higher you can reach in your life. The more you can do for him. The more you can be for him. It, you know, to me, it's a wise man and woman who knows their own weaknesses. That's very wise. And to be able to admit and confess where you fall short, that's very good. That's very good. That's a good place to be. It's when you can't see your faults and your weaknesses. When you can't see where you're weak, you can't see that you're weak. You can't see that you're frail. You're jacked up, toe up from the flow up. You can't see it. Because you think you had it all your life. You think, hey, I'm cool. Like the Fonz, when he walks past the mirror, he pulls his comb out, then he puts it back in his pocket because he's cool. He looks good. Well, see, some of you feel that way about yourself. But for those of you who know that you got some holes in your soul, for those of you who know that you got some rips and tears in your character, for those of you who know that you got issues and you need a supernatural daddy, like they say, this is a job for Superman. When you know that you are a job for Superman and you're not afraid to admit it, you're not trying to hide it, you're not trying to put up a facade, it is what it is. Take it or leave it. The bottom line is, <clears throat> you know where your help lies. And because you know where your help lies and you know how much help you really need, you're going to get that help because you're crying out to the right source. You can't get that help from a tarot card, y'all. 
You can't get that help from a psychic hotline. You can't get that help from the ointments they sell in those in those craft shops. You cannot get help unless you go straight to God himself. I'm telling you, that's the reason Jesus died on the cross. That's the reason. All those stripes on his back were there for all of your issues, all of your weaknesses, all of your downfalls and your setbacks, all of your besetting sins. He, he did all that. Some of you are weak in the mind. Some of you are emotionally retarded. You're 10 years old in a, in a 50-year-old body. Some of you are psychologically torn. You're psychologically depleted because you've been verbally or psychologically or even physically abused for so long and you don't even realize it, but the damage is done. But I know one who can undo all that damage. So no matter what you're going through in your life, no matter how little you think you have, no matter how worthless you think you are, no matter how limited you think your life is, no matter what. God can do the impossible with a little pea brain like you and me. Mm -hmm. He can do the impossible. So when you start to feel down, you grab that Bible, you put it in your lap, and you say, Lord, lead me to scripture. I need you to pour into me. I need you to talk to me. I need you to reaffirm me, encourage me, be the lifter up of my head. And you start seeing him lead you to scripture. When I went through a lot of the emotional issues from being abused at the church, and a lot of you have been abused from church. Sad part is you left the church and left God instead of just, you know, asking God to help you to forgive those people and, and, and keep it moving. <clears throat> but yeah, you moved instead of keeping your faith moving. But the bottom line is going through all of, all of that, even though it was painful, being treated with disrespect, being rejected, being treated like the butt end of every joke, and being laughed at right in my face. God built me up so much that I could forgive at every turn. I could love in spite of it all. And... <laughs> And I could move on without the bitterness hanging around my waist. I could move on without the anger fluttering around in my head. And when you get free like that, you know, the Bible says, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. When you get free like that, the sky is, no, 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 I take that back. The sky is not the limit because God created the sky. Ergo, there are no limits. No, not for you if you're in Christ. So you have to go to God to get those, those boulders removed out of your life. Take away the stone. I am the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. So what did he say when it was time to resurrect Lazarus? Take away the stone. I am the resurrection. Some of y'all need to take away the stone, y'all. That stone is between you and Jesus' miracle work and power. When you get that stone out of his way, he'll be able to raise you up to heights you never dreamed of. But just know that God's in control. He's in control of the sunshine. He's in control of the rain. He's in control of the breeze. And he's in control of the tornado. He's in control. Don't you forget that. He's in control of your glass of water, and he's in control of the flood. He knows what he's doing. He knows how much he's going to let happen and how much he's not. See, what, what we think, a lot of you, you think the devil's in control. Well, he's been given a certain a level of license on this planet. But the one thing about it is the one who handed him that key is Jesus Christ. So know that he can only go so far. And that's in scripture when you read Job chapter one or two or whatever it is, where God says, have you, have you considered my servant Job? 
And when the devil gets through challenging God, God tells him, okay, okay, go on. You can go on and meddle with him a little bit, but only so much. You can't do this and you can't do that. And he had to stay within limits. Then he said, no, let me at him. And he'll curse you to your face. He said, okay, I'm going to let you have a little bit more. But you cannot take his life. Cannot. And that man was full of boils for seven years, suffering. But when that seven-year period was up, and he still tr stayed true to God, even though his friends thought that his problems were uh, a result of his own sins, which they were not. It was an attack from Satan and a test from God. But when he came out on the other side, y'all, he was abundantly blessed, abundantly rewarded for his faithfulness to God. He didn't blame God. He didn't cuss God out. He didn't walk away from God and says, forget you. You going to let this happen to me. I don't need you. No, he didn't go there. He stayed, he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He never once accused God, blamed him. He never once did any of that. He walked true to God. He walked through the storm. There's a song I'm going to end with. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Mm. Um, at the end of the storm, had to remember, give me a second. Had the, at the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Let your dream, and let though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, and don't be afraid. You will never walk alone. You never walk alone. And I'm done. You're not alone, y'all. God bless you. Mm -hmm.